You people read the Bible. Well, there's this verse I got memorized, seems appropriate for this situation. Ezekiel 25, 17. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness, for he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is George Lopez when I lay my vengeance upon thee. Thank you, brother. The first orale has been officially thrown out. And look at the people that don't know. What does that mean, Brian? Horale. Somebody tell me what that means! Horale yourself, buddy! Orale if you are bilingually impaired. is a term of excitement. It is like yee-haw to the country <laughs> people. No, the country people. That'd be a cool ass road to see. Some guy come out on a bull. Holy! <laughs> Where the hell did that come from, Bubba? What the hell? Chingo! <laughs> hey, I'm sorry if you don't understand, but now you know how we feel when we watch Seinfeld. There are a lot of Mexicans in this room, man. Look at all these. Woo! Oh. You can smell the Aquanet in here. <laughs> I could smell it from the parking lot. I said, my people. <laughs> we love hairspray. Mexican people, wow. Aquanet is the most serious hairspray. No offense to white rain. Gotta be politically aware these days. Aquanet is the shit. A big ass can, three feet high, 89 cents. I, I, I. I got the Aquanet, mama. Not that one, the big one. We put it on, we're not even going anywhere. <laughs> Where are you going, Gloria, to answer the phone? <laughs> That's what you should carry as a self-defense mechanism, Aquanet. Fuck mace and pepper spray, Aquanet! You want somebody to freeze? Yeah. Somebody jumps out of the bushes, ah! Don't be wasting me because I'm late as it is. <laughs> it's nice to be a Latino performer. There are very few of us. Uh, we're like condors. There's like three of us. <laughs> me, Paul Rodriguez, and the guy that sells insurance on Telemundo in the bumblebee suit. <laughs> now, if I can get those two guys to fight to the death, I'll be in the mix. Man. You don't see us. You don't see us on television. Television is not friendly to Latinos. There are actually statistically more Mexicans with their backs to the camera. <laughs> Thank you. Then face it. How are you going to be a household name like that? Hey, put it up! <laughs> Spread them, bastard! Spread them, bandito! <laughs> How can you get fame off that? When you watch salsa commercials, we're not even in salsa commercials. <laughs> All Caucasian actors, what kind of salsa is that? Oh, dude, it's La Victoria. <laughs> a 
it's hell hot. <laughs> Eric Estrada eats it. It's good enough for Ponch, it's good enough for me. Let me tell you something about television. You see Budweiser? No Mexicans in Budweiser commercials. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but on occasion, Latinos are known to consume a few alcoholic beverages. <laughs> Not only do we drink beer, we drink it earlier than anybody else. <laughs> How about some credit, right? You know, it's 5.58 in the morning, you're on the liquor store knocking on the window. I see you in there, Yang, let me in! <laughs> if it's about the riots, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on, just a Zima. Come on, I gotta go to work. <laughs> I love my grandfather, but he used to drink while he was taking me to school. Mijo, hold my beer while I get you lunch money. <laughs> Take a hit, kill it. Kill it, pussy, kill it! <laughs> Have a nice day at school. More ants drink beer on television than Mexicans. <laughs> Three frogs are kicking our ass! You don't think you could've got three Mexicans to stand there, bud, wise, er? Was that my part, er? I said it right, huh? Hey, bud, when do we get paid? <laughs> None of us. To me, that's the equivalent of not seeing any women in feminine hygiene product commercials. <laughs> Who's gonna be the Mass and Girl spokesperson? <laughs> Hi, I'm Cliff from IHOP. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> you ever feel not so fresh? Well then, try the Rudy Tooty Fresh and Fruity. <laughs> Disposable douche. So y'all can have that fruity booty. <laughs> this douche is made in New York City. That's why we need to change that image. You know, people, if you, if you listen and you watch Mexicans, I'll tell them, you think that we all have accents and we're all, you know. I called the restaurant to make reservations and I said, my name is Lopez, and the woman said, oh, you don't sound Mexican. <laughs> what are we supposed to sound like, Cheech? <laughs> you have to call up? I'd like to make a dinner reservation for two. Ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da state the song because I wear my sister's clothes. Da -da -da, da -da -da. It's ignorance that's the enemy, more so than anybody of any particular color. Ignorance. I mean, I was in line to get tickets for a concert. There was like nine people. And I was in the back and the lady says, excuse me, senior? <laughs> senior, well, I better start using more oil of Olay <laughs> to cover up these crow's feet. She said to me, this line is for credit card holders only. Oh, I, oh I'm sorry. Come on, donkey. Huh? Oh, forgive me. Come on, donkey. Huh? That's why nobody wants to be Mexican. We have more people defecting than Cuba. Nobody wants to be Mexican. They want to become Hispanic. Well, I'm Hispanic. Oh, yeah, well, what part of Hispania did your ancestors come from? I don't know. <laughs> there are no Hispanics because there is no Hispania. <laughs> Where's Hispania? Probably right next door to Caucasia. I can't That's why I liked it better in the 70s when we used to be other. <laughs> Remember, every application for a job, black, white, other. 
Give me a minute, please. Le Flaco, what should I put down right there? Uh, ask if you can put down beige. So I'm gonna put down beige. And for you, Flaco, I'm gonna put down desert sky. That's what I'm I run into closet Mexicans everywhere I go. You know the ones, you know, my mother and father are Mexican, but I'm from Spain. <laughs> You're from Montebello, fucker, come out of the closet. <laughs> that house is a timeshare. <laughs> they wouldn't admit to being Mexican for a Klondike bar, do you hear me? You see them on the news all the time, or the television reporters. Perfect English until they say their names. You can run, but you cannot hide, Coco. They say it proud. Proud is one thing, flamenco is another. You ever see them? That's it from here, reporting live. I'm Linda Alvarez. That show Friends scares the shit out of me. I've seen it nine times. Apparently, they don't have other friends. It takes place in a coffee house. Who picks the coffee beans? Colombians. You see any Colombians there? The man with the donkey stays outside. You go to the movies, we're always dealers. Always drug dealers and maids and pimps. That's tired. That's why when you see movies that have us, like that movie My Family that came out, the title had a subtitle. How ignorant do you think that we are that we can't figure out my family, mi familia? <laughs> oh. I'm going in. <laughs> that title had a subtitle. They don't do that to any other movie. You don't see Waterworld, Mundo de Agua. El pendejo. But you love to go to the movies because you're the heroes in the movies. You're Superman and Wonder Boy and Bat Chick. That's why I like the original Batman because the, the Joker was Latino, Cubano, Cesar Romero. But I thought that Batman should have been Latino because that car was too nice. for a white man to be driving. <laughs> if Batman had been Mexican, let me say this, there would not have been a bat cave. He would have still lived at home. That's why there aren't a lot of Latino homeless because technically you have to leave home to be homeless, do you hear me? Living in a converted garage doesn't count. Go get gas, fill it up, Batman. Now nah, just put it around three bucks. I see the sign in the sky. I'm not done ironing my cape yet. The bat cave would be at Nana's house. What are you talking about? See his grandmother knocking on his door. Mijo! Mijo, levántate, mijo! Didn't I tell you a hundred times that I'm Batman? <laughs> Orale, pinchy Batman. All right. So I was get Batman. There's a boy with a question mark on his shirt outside that wants to talk to you. <laughs> tell him I'm not here, Nana. Guy is a donkey. Huh? Well, he's outside and he's looking for you and your friend Ruben. <laughs> Robin, cabrón, and not Ruben. <laughs> Whatever. How do I know your friends? The one that the dad drinks, mijo, that one. That's 
also my family would describe my friends by the afflictions that their family had. They would say, Miko, your friend called. Which one? The one that the dad's eye is turned inside out. And the one that the mom has the baby foot, Miko. He said it was an emergency. You know why? Because Mexicans, we don't take care of ourselves, man. When I was a kid, some mornings we would just have manteca for breakfast. <laughs> Fat and Kool-Aid. <laughs> don't put too much sugar because it's bad for them. <laughs> oh. Every breakfast started with a big ass pan of lard frying. <laughs> what are we having, Nana? I'm making a salad. You want the popsicle? Throw it in, Nico. Throw it in. <laughs> the average life expectancy of a male Latino, seven. <laughs> Look at ferrets live longer than we do. Do you hear me? It's horrible to have to drop out of Little League because you've had a stroke. <laughs> Please excuse my son Jorge because his left side is paralyzed. Take that to the teacher. It's not very glamorous, man, because uh, Mexican food is the highest in cholesterol. It goes straight to your waist. You ever see Mexican dudes a big ass waist and skinny legs? That's a good look. And little kids are calling you, hey, Kool Aid! I think he's talking to you, Tiny. Yeah, go to the mall and try to find some jeans, 52-20. You know that we eat menudo, do you hear me? Menudo. If you don't know what menudo is, run for your life. It's the whole cow. Sometimes still alive. Put him in the pot, Miko. Mm. Put him in the pot, Miko. Mm. Leave the bell on. That's the price. Mm. Yeah. Menudo is an old Spanish word that means, yeah, throw that in. <laughs> Nobody saw you drop it. Throw it in. But Mexican food puts you to sleep. That's how you know when it's the shit. It's orgasmic. It's orgasmic. You come when you I, 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 carnitas más buena que la chingada. Ay, carnitas. Oh, oh, oh. Give it to me, you rice and bean platter. Good. Flan, spank me, flan, spank me, flan. <laughs> like a glove. That's why Latino men are such horrible lovers, because we take you to eat first. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're driving home, are we gonna make love tonight? Oh yeah, we are. <laughs> you get home, she's naked, and you're all bloated. No, I... Oh. Oh. No, I still want you. Just give me a minute, Cochina. Take your hands off. Oh. I think if I'm gonna get hard, I need some canela to make it my stomach. to talk dirty to you? I'm gonna eat you like a fajita. <laughs> you wake up the next morning all proud. Was I good? Oh, 
yeah, you ate everything on the plate. You were insatiable. <laughs> we make tamales at Christmas time. More than anybody could ever eat in a lifetime. <laughs> My grandmother, you know, and I'm an only child, and a lot of times when you're Mexican and you tell people you're an only child, they think, wow, that's ethnically impossible. I don't want to shock you, but my car's painted all one color, okay? <laughs> and registered in my name. Oh, dude, you're the white bat of the Latino culture. <laughs> we make more tamales than anybody could ever. There'll be six of us. My grandmother will be, okay, let me see. Sabes que there's going to be six of us. I think we should make 45,000. <laughs> que no? Que no? Que no, que no, Coco. They cook all night. Eventually, people stop cooking. Well, Fran, I think that's enough pot roast, don't you? My grandmother cooks all night, loud. light in the house on. Four o'clock in the morning, every light in the house is on. So I just get open the refrigerator, we need more light. They just keep cooking it till they're done talking about everybody. That's the way it works, man. And if you're not at the house, it's you they're talking about. I can't believe she brought that cavron. Let me call and get more masa. Hang on. Masa. Masa. I think that's where the Mexican astronauts train. Masa? that is destroying our culture, man. The fact that Latinos are too passive. Are you going to go vote? No, sabes que I'll go tomorrow. <laughs> I just had a fajita platter. I can't even keep my eyes. I respect African-American people for pulling off the Million Man March. That's an incredible accomplishment, truly. When you think about it, a million African-American people getting together for one theme, one cause, one purpose. Could it get quieter in this room? <laughs> See, Mexicans would never do that, man. We could probably have the million man nap. <laughs> A million Mexicans laid out, my brothers! <laughs> Calla se, shh! <laughs> Running the guys in Los Angeles, yo, homeboy, you going to the nap? No, I'm too tired. <laughs> Hey, but if you go, man, bring me a t-shirt, man. <laughs> they do shit to our culture that you could never do to any other culture. They name cars after our culture? Fiesta! <laughs> oh, and what a wonderful piece of automotive breakthrough history. It's a piece that's just like a mobile piñata. What is that? <laughs> you get in an accident, candy comes out of the fender. Chicle! Chicle! That's my almond joy, dude. Back off. There's a car called the Festiva. That's not even a word in Spanish. I think it means piece of shit car. How afraid of people are of crime? I saw a Festiva that had a club on the steering wheel. And the club was hanging out of both sides of the window. It looked like an appetizer. What the? <laughs> People.
will just break in and take the club. <laughs> they have an alarm. Shh, I know the code. They do it to Native Americans. They have the Jeep Comanche, the Apache, the Cherokee, all wonderful Indian nations, which apparently I wasn't aware had four-wheel drive. Wow. <laughs> no wonder they was at the top of the mountain. Cheater! <laughs> but they don't do it to anyone else. Where is the Buick Bar Mitzvah? Where's that car? <laughs> have you seen the Chevy Circumcision anywhere? <laughs> hey, put the top back up. What do you mean you can't? But we love to give things that are dangerous an ethnic background. Like there's killer bees that are coming uh, from another country and they've called them Africanized killer bees. I think the word that we should be concerned with is killer. <laughs> Who cares about Africanized? But you know, we always give dangerous things an ethnic background. I doubt if that if the bees were coming from Israel that they'd call them juju bees. To <laughs> juju bees, run! Coupons are coming out from under the wings, run! Oh, it's not funny when it's you, is it? <laughs> hey man, I don't create the double standards, I just report them, all right? People are collecting Southwestern decor. Oh, I have the little coyotes that are howling to the moon. You go to Mexico and bring shit back to this country. Let me give you a tip. Mexicans in Mexico sell you shit that they don't want. <laughs> Sir, how much for the Mickey Mouse wearing the German helmet with the eagle on top? <laughs> oh, that's a very special thing, senora. That... $117. All right, give me three. We had all that shit in my house when I was growing up, but then it was called being poor. Who knew? That's a lovely throw rug. That's my bed, bitch. Get off. Now I gotta make it again. Get off. I was reading in the paper that Oprah Winfrey paid $125,000, and this is how to describe them, for two Mexican end tables. For $125,000, you get two Mexicans to hold the lamps in your house. <laughs> One in each corner holding the lamp. <laughs> I'm tired, the light is keeping me awake. <laughs> oh, you wanna read? Orale, chingale, Oprah. She's going to the bathroom. Chucho, follow her. <laughs> Where's the outrage? Taco Bell has been picking Mexicans apart as long as they've been in existence. If you're Mexican and you eat at Taco Bell, turn in your membership card, you porch Mexican backward fuck Uncle Tomas. <laughs> You're gonna eat at a place where their slogan was, run for the border? Hey, hey, hey! Run for the border. No, not you, Dad, come back! Put your luggage down, we're from here, man, relax! I'm sorry, Mijo, I got a lot of things on my mind. I mean, Batman, I'm sorry, I got a lot of things. And they opened up a Taco Bell in Mexico that closed after three months. Boing. <laughs> yeah, we look at it like a haunted house. <laughs> no me pushes. I think that's where the cuckoo lives in. <laughs> Now people have to explain it. Kukuli, that is the, 
That's the Mexican boogeyman. We have our own boogeyman, but thank you for your loner. <laughs> Run for the border. See, you couldn't do that to any other culture. You couldn't open up a Vietnamese restaurant and have their slogan be, doggone good. I don't think <laughs> the cat's meow. <laughs> we have to die to become mainstream successful. People Magazine came out with the 25 most intriguing people of the year. Ours was dead. <laughs> Selena. We have to die to become intriguing. Do you hear what I'm saying? We have to die. Remind me never to start a fan club. Look, and let the midget from Willow run it. <laughs> Selena put a Oompa Loompa in charge of her finances. The bitch was this big. <laughs> embezzling money. How much money could she have been embezzling? She was staying at a day's inn. <laughs> Porque el Motel 6 estaba booked. Don't be tapao about it. You know, you know what it's like. She's bigger now, dead than alive. Does that make sense to you? Let's move on. <laughs> Jerry Garcia, the leader of the Grateful Dead, Mexican. Garcia? Hello. <laughs> That's how high the Grateful Dead fans are. They didn't realize that for 30 years they've been following a mariachi and his band around. <laughs> No, Mexican, he's Jerry. Come on, man. <laughs> Don't take the acid if you're going to trip. <laughs> taco Bell's never used a Mexican in the commercial because we blow the cover. Just take a bite of the taco and say how much you enjoy it. <laughs> Smells like shit already. I ain't eating. Salsa in the little plastic packets. <sighs> That's like my grandmother used to make. You ever see people who think that that's hot? They put a little bit of salsa. <laughs> oh, mother of pearl. Oh, what's in that tomato? Calgon, take me away. Oh, there must be an onion in there. Come on, man, who makes that shit? Gerber, who makes that? Real salsa makes your nose run. That's how you know it's the shit. Mocos are a good indicator. You just have saucy. <laughs> That's a compliment in a real Mexican restaurant. <laughs> Como esta todo aquí? <laughs> real salsa comes in an old mayonnaise jar <laughs> with the label torn off. <laughs> the label didn't even tear off, it jumped off. Ah! Wow, that's not Miracle Whip. What's up? <laughs> that's why the police using cayenne pepper spray. What's that supposed to do to us? Make us hungry? <laughs> that's not a deterrent. It's a condiment. <laughs> I hope we'd have more riots out here. Freeze! <laughs> Wow, that's delicious. What the hell is that? I don't know, but I'm gonna get some chips. I don't know what it is. Wow, somebody must be throwing a festiva.
But they love to Americanize Mexican food. There's a chain of restaurants called Chevy's. What's the implication there, that all Mexicans drive Chevy's? I don't. They don't even have Mexican people working there. They're Caucasians dressed up as Mexicans. With the little vest and the sombrero. Hi, I'm Brian. I mean, El Brian. You order in Spanish and they give you that blank ass look. Sabes que? Traeme chile verde. What? What number is that, dude? Come on, my manager's looking. Oh, fuck. Chili verde. What? You want chili verga? <laughs> you want verga? No, she wants verga. I'm gonna have the number seven, the panocha platter. I'm gonna write that. How dare you talk about Pinocchio? How dare you mock the wooden boy? But you know, you name stuff after our culture. Like when you go to restaurants, you see it at every little diner and every little restaurant. I'll have the south of the border burger. Oh yeah, well I'll have the white man from the suburb sandwich. of the border. What kind of shit delivered to you by the illegal alien? Here you fool. Oops, I forgot something. I wanted avocado. When is it gonna stop, man? Have you tried the special wet back bacon guacamole burger? Also, we have the Spick Tacos. They're spectacular. Wake up, man. Get out from under the cactus. Wake up. Do you know the Taco Bell, they have such disrespect for us. They're making up food. A double-decker taco? A double-decker taco. What do they have? Stoners cooking in the kitchen? Uh, I got an idea. Dude, all right, look, let's get a taco and put it in a taco. <laughs> what are they gonna do? They're all asleep, fucker, come on. A taco in a taco. Where's the outrage? <laughs> you put a bagel in a bagel, the Jewish community would lose their mind. You take that out, my sugar, son of a bitch. <laughs> Have you seen the double-decker taco? It's one taco in another taco, and the glue are the beans that hold one taco. Uh -uh. My stomach doesn't feel too good. Uh -uh. Would you like nacho cheese? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> I'm Mexi melting! <laughs> you will shit all over yourself. Do you ever see people with a sweater around their waist? That's not a fashion statement, it's a tourniquet. <laughs> Just wrapped around their waist. <laughs> Make it stop, Ryan. Make it stop. <laughs> and the funk that comes out of your body the next morning. Whoa! You try to light a match, it turns itself off. What the hell? <laughs> Lysol won't even come out of the can. Lysol's like, fuck you, I ain't going out there. I'm staying here in the can where it's safe. 
Poke me with the needle all you want, badass. I ain't coming out. And the worst part is that they have African-American people advertising the double-decker taco because we need to stick together. We need solidarity. Because next year, they, Taco Bell come out with a whole black line of food and let's see how you like it. They could come out with a Chitlin Supreme in a minute. <laughs> have you tried the special ham hock bell grande? <laughs> we also have spook tacos. <laughs> They're spooktacular. <laughs> oh, but they can do it to us. And you moan me? Okay. I'll see you on the bus back to Hispania. <laughs> they try to blame Latinos for shit that happens naturally. We get blamed for everything. If it's a storm, El Nino. <laughs> High winds, Santa Ana. There was 12 Mexicans huffing and puffing and my roof came off. <laughs> you don't agree that there's a double standard? Let me explain it to you this way. You get six Caucasian people, you put them in a car, that's called carpooling. <laughs> you put us in a car, <laughs> All right, gang bangers, get out. <laughs> what? Come on, tia gang banger, get out. Go to jail, what are you guys in for? The ride along program. <laughs> Don't mess with me because I'll take that van and run your ass over. <laughs> we get blamed for everything. That's why when Oklahoma happened, I'm glad that they were looking for the John Doe instead of the Juan Doe. <laughs> See, but that's not Latino MO, you know, two tons of fertilizer. <laughs> You're not going to find a Mexican that's going to help you load two tons of crap. <laughs> Maybe one or two loads, but on the third one, so I'm your friend and everything, but that's it. I smell like caca, Batman. I'm not gonna make it to the happy hour smelling like this. Now, if it was 12 million uh, cherry bombs with one long fuse to somebody's backyard, it was us. My mom's not here, light it! <laughs> here she comes. <laughs> they tried to blame the O.J. Simpson murders on Latinos. Didn't Johnny Cochran say that he saw four Latinos fleeing the scene? Let me tell you this, Latinos never flee. <laughs> Saunter, but never flee. And this is another reason. We would never kill a white woman. It's very rare we get one. <laughs> We're not gonna kill it once we get it. <laughs> Maybe take it to El Torito. <laughs> that was a wild thing, man. See, Rosa Lopez, no relation. Do you know that a tabloid television show called me the week that she was testifying because they thought that we were related? She's from El Salvador and I'm Mexican. Well, mother and son. I said, that's just pure ignorance. I said, man, you should be ashamed that you even called me. Then they told me it was $7,000. Mama! Chucho, get the car. Rosa Lopez sent Latinos back 50 years. She wore a purple velour jumpsuit to court. Do you hear me? A purple velour jumpsuit. Just when we were starting to get out, they pulled us back in. Does she not have family at home? Somebody could have said, Rosa, take the purple suit off. Barney's got that whole thing nailed, take it off. You're going to court, you're not going to Target, bitch, take it off.
What kills me is that they believe the dog over Rosa Lopez. <laughs> Rosa Lopez testified her ass off. For a week and a half, no one believed shit she said. A dog barks three times, and that's the burden of proof. <laughs> roof, 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 you hear that? That Akita has paper, she doesn't. Who's kicking it in El Salvador and who's living in Naguna Niguel? <laughs> but at least she worked. She was a maid. She worked. What did Kato Kalin do? <laughs> this is Kato Kalin's job. All right, OJ, you want a Whopper with cheese and methamphetamines? Hang on. <laughs> a vial of crack and the Pocahontas doll. I'll be right back. <laughs> that homeboy is stupid. It was like Beavis on the witness stand. Mr. Kalin, you said you heard pounding? <coughs> <coughs> she said pound. <coughs> <laughs> but I love how Rosa Lopez pretended not to speak English, which is the defense mechanism of every Latino in the United States. <laughs> I'm letting you in a little trade secret. It's like a porcupine with quills that go up. Anytime there's some danger, I do it. What happened here? You know, say nada que estaba el hombre allí, me no que. Shut up, you're gonna make me laugh. Estaba el hombre allí. That's why the police use the nightstick on Latinos. The nightstick has become the linguistic tool of every police department. Get out of the car. You know, say que get out of the car. Pero no entiendo. Oh, you want me to get out of the car? Oh. <laughs> All right, dude, I got it. That's going to leave a big-ass chipote on my head. <laughs> but Detective Furman said some very disparaging things about Mexicans, and that never came out. There was stuff about Mexicans on the Furman taste, and then I tried to tell people, did you hear what Furman said, that Mexicans are stupid? Yeah, anyway... He said that we were too stupid to spell the names of the cars that we drive. Okay, let me see. I drive a Volvo. Let me see. B O L. B O. Come on, donkey. <laughs> wow, my eyes hurt. I better put some bizine. <laughs> so now everything is racially motivated. The race card is being played everywhere. Even in Las Vegas. I was there two weeks. You can play the race card in Las Vegas. They have tables set up and everything. <laughs> Let me see. I got two black guys and two Mexicans. I'm going to stay. <laughs> and nobody would say the N-word. Nobody. Except Furman and F. Lee Bailey. Did you hear F. Lee Bailey say the N-word? One day he said it 12 times. Time. He would even ask Johnny Cochran, can I say it again today? I like it. <laughs> After the 11th time, O.J. looked at him and said, hey, man, enough. Oh, you want me to kill you too? Enough. <laughs> oh, yeah. What didn't they find at the crime scene of football? Wake up, man. <laughs> but if I ever commit a murder, and I probably will, I can think of two or three people in this room. I want Johnny Cochran. That's who I want. Because I don't care how I have to pay for him. Through affirmative action, through a grant. <laughs> collecting cans. I don't care. I want Johnny Cochran. Because he is so moving. His closing argument, I think even at one point, OJ must have thought, damn, maybe I didn't do it. <laughs> wow. Everything's racially motivated, if you believe that. Right. Michael Jackson now saying that all the child molestation charges against him are racially motivated, that people are picking on him because he's white. <laughs> <laughs> what color is homeboy this year? Khaki? What color is that? You go to the paint store, we're looking for something in a Jackson. <laughs> no, Tito is too dark. Could I see the germane semi-glass, perhaps? 
Let me tell you this. He would have been just as talented and just as beloved if he had stayed black with the original parts and the original color. <laughs> Does he think that the lighter he became, the better he would sing? David Hasselhoff, case closed. <laughs> Let me tell you this, Cocos, that the advantages of being dark clearly outweigh the disadvantages. Because when you're dark, you get to ride in elevators all by yourself. <laughs> when you go to the automatic teller machine, you never have to wait in line. <laughs> I had a lady call me Taco. <laughs> all panic, you can go, Taco. <laughs> Did you just call me Taco? No, fajita. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Our names are not appetizers. Do you hear me? One guy named Nacho fucked it up for everybody else. <laughs> so why even be mad? Just play along. Oh, well, thank you, chicken pot pie. <laughs> it's very nice of your wife, peach cobbler, to let me go ahead. Illegal aliens come from all over the world, not just the hole in the fence in San Diego. <laughs> this is a nation of aliens going back to the first one, Christopher Columbus. They don't know what to do with the border. They want to put glow-in-the-dark powder. Oh, yeah, that's good. So that if you get it on yourself, if you come across at night, you glow. <laughs> Identify yourself, Casper the Friendly Mexican. <laughs> Thank you very much, float on. Thank you. <laughs> you think the Mexicans come to the United States and take all the good jobs away from Americans? Oh, yeah. yeah. You can see it. Oh, yes, I'm only working in computers until something in produce opens up. <laughs> I take my hat off to people working in the fields because I don't think anybody else could do that shit. How long? Oh. Oh, you're becoming conscious now? Oh. Oh. You guys are always a little late, huh? How long would a Caucasian migrant farm worker last? Wait, wouldn't it last one row? It'd be out there in the sun. Fog, oh, it's hot. <laughs> Whew. I could use some country time lemonade. <laughs> so my Birkenstocks are all muddy. There's no shrooms out here, liars. Lettuce. <laughs> so now they want to dig a ditch at the border. And every Republican candidate for president is crazier than the one before. It's like playing poker. Well, I'll raise you five feet and dig it five feet deeper. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I'll raise you ten feet and put alligators in the ditch. <laughs> you know what? Put alligators, motherfucker, and now with their shoes and belts. Go ahead. <laughs> See guys coming out of the ditch with a new jacket? How do you like it? <laughs> Does it go? Does it go? <laughs> go get one. There's three left. Hurry. <laughs> Taking a picture with the alligator upside down. Flacco, take my picture. Don't cut my head off, because I want it to be my Christmas card. <laughs> Let me tell you this. In 25 years, this is going to be a pretty diverse country, whether you like it or not. We're not in Kansas anymore, tontos. <laughs> in 25 years, the majority of people are going to be African-American, Asian, and Latino people. Could it get quieter in this room? I'll be a grandfather, I'll be telling scary stories to my grandkids. Okay, your grandpa's gonna tell you a scary story. A long, long time ago, when your grandpa was a little boy, there used to be people who had white skin. <laughs> ah! Really, grandpa? Really, mijo, like the man who cuts our grass. Okay, you guys, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming, thank you.